Hey, this is John Cooksey from Elite Video, and I'm going to show you 15 great techniques that you could use in your filmmaking or videography. Tip number one, bring along one of these small LED $40 lights, not necessarily for a main light, but for your backlighting or hair lighting. In a desperate situation like I was in this last shoot, where I had 10 minutes to set up, you could throw one of these on a box or on a light stand or tape it down anywhere and it'll make a good hair light or backlight. They come with a gel, they run on batteries that last forever, and it's a great deal. Tip number two, Bring a soft box and use the soft box from your interviews and bring it as close as possible without being in the shot. So if it's really close, you're gonna get a smooth, nice lighting on all the side of the face. Don't put it in front, put it more toward the side to get sort of that side lighting. Tip number three, bring along an inexpensive $50 Russian made F2 lens. Now F2 means you're going to th be able to throw the background out of focus. So about $50 is all it takes to get this lens and that's the lens we're using right now with a little $10 adapter because I'm using it for a Canon and you can see you get great quality and the background goes out of focus like you're seeing here and that's really impressive to a lot of people. The next tip is use a shotgun instead of a lavalier if you can. Sometimes you get a lot better sound and it really is a great way to get that deeper bass. Here's an example of a shot with a just lavalier. One of the exhibits that I'm most excited about for the show is called The Big Wheel Keeps on Turning. And now here's the same thing with shotgun. One of the exhibits that I'm most excited about for the show is called The Big Wheel Keeps on Turning. We're using the shotgun right on a little cheap stand here and it's maybe about three or four feet away from me and uh, it does really, really well. The next tip is slow motion. A lot of times people use slow motion for an effect, but I want you to think about the times you have two seconds of a shot that is just fantastic, but you have four seconds to fill. So you use that four seconds to, instead of filling out the whole shot, just take the first couple seconds, one or two seconds, and slow it down. Sometimes it's a much better effect. The next tip is what I call lazy background lighting. Instead of lighting up your background, and uh, of course you let your foreground and having your background lit uh, with a lot of lights look first for a background that's already lit here's an example one that was already lit we positioned our interviewee in front of that and everybody says "Ooh, that looks so good well i let all the lighting of the museum take care of that background the next tip is to use a glide cam a movie or some of the stabilization in your video camera to do slow circles around things motion is really important these days in videography and filmmaking and a small amount of motion as you're trucking the shot will allow people to get a different perspective as it goes along. One thing to make your productions look even better is either get an Apple or After Effects template. With After Effects, you're able to download templates for anywhere like this one was $15 to $30 to $40 and plug in your video or stills and get this look like it's a very high production look without investing lots of money. If you're using a plain camcorder and it's not matching with your other camcorders like the 5D Mark III Canon, what we do is we take our lower end camera and we do a little bit of saturation and a little bit of sharpening and you'd be amazing how well it'll blend the two cameras together. The next tip is all about a painter's pole. You can get a painter's pole with a little bit of a camera mount at the end. We put a GoPro on this, extended really high up, and we're able to get fantastic shots 18 or 19 feet high in the air without a drone. Great if you're doing inside shots. Next thing I want you to do is look at this little tiny camera. It's under 150 bucks and it's a time-lapse camera. What's nice is it's cheap enough that if it does get stolen, you're not losing thousands of dollars, but you can mount it somewhere all day and set it up really quick. The quality is not going to be as great as a digital SLR, but it's pretty fun to be able to hook it up on any of your job and get some time-lapse of things going on. I put it on a little flex arm and mount it anywhere and you're good to go. The next tip is Feel free to speed up your video and then slow it down halfway through the clip. It's done all the time. It's still a hip little trick and it allows you to compress a little bit more in. It's done on reality shows all the time. One great tip is to take your camera and put it down where people are looking down at something and just tell them to ignore the camera. If they're little kids, sometimes they ignore the camera anyway and it's a great angle shot that most people don't get from the floor angle that is really impressive. A lot of times people are filming something, but the real action is the people watching it. So whenever you can, for example, in this shot with some museum footage, I don't get just the exhibits or the back of people. I try to get the people's reactions to what they're watching with the exhibit. So whenever you think of a video and people in it, think of the most important thing is how are they reacting 
to their subject matter. And the way to do that is film the subject matter in an angle with the people almost in the background, but even though they're in the background, they really become your primary subject and your purveyor of emotion toward the camera. The other thing I like to do with the camera is take it off all tripods and all glide cams and everything and just walk it over places that you normally are not able to. Here's some um, colored mountain fancy museum exhibit and I took the DSLR at a wide angle, 16 millimeter, and just slowly moved it over the sand. A lot of people think they have to stand with the camera, but your arm has a lot of length. You can just stretch your hand out and keep moving that or put it with one hand, be creative. If there's this much space, you can bring that camera in places that you never could with the bigger cameras or with a shoulder mounted rig. Sometimes with your camera, you don't always want to start off on a regular angle. You may want to start off on an angle, pull back and twist and get another angle. And this is just a little bit of a spice, I call it. You may want to throw in once in a blue mood in your productions to give a shot that not everybody is doing anymore. My name is John Cooksey with Elite Video. I hope you enjoy our channel. It's the first time for me back in a while on the channel. I hope to be putting stuff up every couple weeks. So make sure you subscribe, subscribe to this website. We'd love to see you here. Any things you want us to cover, just let us know and we'll see you on the next video.